is foul, and foul is fair, hover through the fog and filthy air. This is an iconic line from Shakespeare's Macbeth, also known as the Tragedy of Macbeth. The Scottish play is one of Shakespeare's most well-known, and has seen countless film adaptations. However, the one we will be looking at today is The Tragedy of Macbeth, a 2021 adaptation made by Joel Cohen, starring Denzel Washington and Francis McDormand. Thane of Glam's Macbeth is delivered a prophecy from a trio of witches that declares he shall soon be king of Scotland. Consumed by his political ambition, Macbeth and his lady take it upon themselves to see that this prophecy is fulfilled. Their initial murder of King Duncan to guarantee Macbeth the throne soon turns into a spree of killings as they try to conceal their web of lies, all while they descend into mad paranoia. The plot remains largely similar to the original play, but Cohen's directorial vision proves distinct when considering it against other Macbeth films that exist. The tragedy of Macbeth uses two film crafts that contribute significantly to its look and feel, cinematography and mise-en-scene, both crafts of which the film was also nominated for at the 94th Academy Awards. Shakespearean language is notoriously difficult to read, much less comprehend the entirety of a film whose dialogue is composed in it. While Macbeth remains hard to follow, the performances here bring some ease to the task and even add some flair. The use of histrionics and exaggerated delivery gives us a nuanced performance that is not only entertaining to watch, but also greatly telling of the character. What is imprinted in many minds from this version of Macbeth is Catherine Hunter as the Three Witches. Her performance saw her contort her body and move her limbs around in unthinkable ways, suggesting the witch's creepy, otherworldly appearance. Besides, she capitalized on a raspy voice to add texture to their speech, making them sound even more threatening and ominous. Sleep, shall neither night nor day hang upon his penthouse lid. He shall live a man for a bit. From this, even if you don't understand what the witches are saying, you can at least form the general idea that these are antagonistic, evil characters. Generally, theatrical sets are regarded as two-dimensional, consisting of actors against a backdrop, whilst film sets can be seen more as three-dimensional, especially with the use of a camera to navigate the ins and outs of the area. Cohen's Macbeth blends the two, operating in a sort of 2.5-dimensional space. This gives the film a look faithful to a stage play while also remaining filmic. The set designs are also very geometrically composed and lack many details, and combined with the black and white picture to obscure the setting even more, altogether makes the set look abstract. It gives the impression of an area removed from space, time, and reality, implying an unnatural existence. This imparts an air of mystery and liminality and strengthens the eerie, supernatural nature of the film. But set design and performances are only as powerful as the lens we view them through. Typically for a stage play, it would be our own eyes, but films have something different in store. Light plays an important role in Cohen's adaptation, especially because of the lack of colour. The strong lighting and high tonal contrast helps to accentuate the actor's features and better bring out their expressions, which is important for vivid, theatrical portrayals of emotions. However, it also helps narratively to distinguish Macbeth's intentions in his moments of moral conflict. When he refuses to act evilly, he is bathed in white light, associating him with goodness and purity. In his more sinister moments, he is cast in darkness, giving him a more menacing appearance. Other than black and white, another distinct cinematographic choice is the use of the aspect ratio 1.37 is to 1, also known as the Academy Ratio. The use of the Academy Ratio helps to frame the characters more intimately. Rather than make everything widescreen and draw more attention to the surroundings, Cohen chooses to center in and focus on the actors. Furthermore, the audience seems to be physically much closer to characters like Macbeth and Lady Macbeth, in turn making it seem as if we have bridged a physical gap to gain a closer glimpse into their mind and emotions, a crucial storytelling tool in Shakespearean tragedies. There are a lot of stage-to-film adaptations, especially Shakespearean ones, but why bother adapting plays into films? One main advantage is that you can manipulate what the audience sees. Camera angles to suggest status, shot sizes to create mood, these all can help to bring a new narrative layer to the table, or even just enhance what you already have. Even visual effects are available. Macbeth made use of this to make the witches more eerie, 
and even include crows, a new motif to strengthen the mood. The so crows and uh, everything, it's all visual effect. They did an amazing job. Not to mention accessibility. Back in Shakespeare's time, plays were highly accessible to the rich and poor. Today, not many people are going to be able to afford good seats to Macbeth put on by a reputable acting company. Films help bring you these reimagined stories at a much more affordable price. Macbeth was the first Shakespearean play I read, and seeing it the way Cohen envisioned the story only made my love for it even stronger. With an intensely creative grasp on mise-en-scene and cinematography, this adaptation stands as one of the stronger ones to emerge. While I highly recommend it for anyone who has already been exposed to Macbeth, I can't say I'd do the same for someone who has zero prior knowledge on it. That's it, Cohen's version just might be the spur to prick the sights of your intent. For me, I can't wait to see what's next for a murderous king and his equally twisted queen, begging the question, When shall we three?